Hello, my friend. It's episode 370 of the Keto Diet Podcast. My name is Leanne Vogel. I blog over at healthfulpursuit.com. I'm so thrilled to have you here today. We have a super special guest. Her name is Helen Hundermark. She's 20 years old and the founder of Cure Eated, her creative space for all things health and wellness. Since September 2018, she's experienced a major health crisis that almost cost her her life in August 2021. Wow. She's experienced viruses, mold, heavy metals, environmental toxins, genetic predispositions that have left her just, yeah, fighting for her life, to be honest. And with the help of functional medicine, nutrition, and other lifestyle changes, she's starting to see some a glimmer of hope here. And she came on the show to just share her experience. And wow. 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 We met on Instagram. I just, I love Instagram friends. I have so many of you that listen to the show and just thank you so much for your support support and connecting with me. And for many of you praying for me, it's just, it's incredible. And connecting with Helen has been such a treat and getting to really chat with her about how hard this has been for her, you know, of just losing friends and a boyfriend and, you know, all the changes that come when you're so young to deal with these chronic issues. And we've chatted with a couple people with chronic issues in the past. I really enjoyed episode 354, where we talked with my friend Anne. Cabell about living in mold and chronic illness. And then there's a really good episode uh, 347 with Lauren Tessier about an introduction to mold illness and exposure. So if after listening to Helen's story today, you're like, what is all this about? I don't really understand. And you want to learn more about mold and the effects that it can have on the body. I can't tell you how many clients I start working with. And I'm like, yeah, well, the reason you can't lose weight is um, I think there might be mold in your house. And sure enough, we do mold testing in the home. And turns out there is mold in the home, either water damaged or previous homes that they've lived in. And another big one is heavy metals, which we touch on a little bit about in today's episode also. So if you want to connect with Helen, her website is cureeated. That's C-U-R-E-E. E A T E D dot com. Okay, cure Eden. So without further ado, let's get to today's episode. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, and heal your body. Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code Keto Podcast. That's all one word. This 30-day program gives you a clear step-by-step how-to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. Go to help healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international bestselling author of The Keto Diet, founder of happyketobody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Hi, Helen. How are you? I'm good, Leanne. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. It's just great. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? So my name is Helen Hundred Mark, and I'm 20 years old. And I recently created a blog and a website to share some helpful tips, recipes, and fun facts that I wish that I had known when I started my health journey in September 2018, which kind of began when I came down with mononucleosis. And I didn't really know at the time, but this kind of created a downward spiral in my health and led to a health crisis that almost actually cost me my life in August of this past year, 2021. So yeah. Wow. And how did all of it kind of start? What was the first symptom? Or when did you notice that something was wrong? So I would say around September 2018, I just was just super fatigued. I could not walk up the stairs at school. And my mom kind of just took me to the emergency room because she never like knew that I, I never slept until bedtime. I, I would come home from school and just lay down and sleep. And at school, I couldn't get up the stairs. And this was my junior year. And she just took me to the ER. We didn't really think much of it. She just did, they did some tests. And then it came out that I have um, mono. So then I stayed at home. And we thought that after two weeks, it would just go away. Like, you know, they tell you two weeks, 
then you should be back to normal. But no, I actually stayed home my entire junior year and taught myself everything when I had the energy to and then went to school to take the tests. And I just wouldn't get any better. And around Christmas time, my GI really, really started to act up. I also stopped menstruating in about October. I was still a very healthy weight. So it wasn't a weight related menstrual stop i guess and but then the gastro problem started every single time i ate something starchy or fatty basically anything that wasn't a lean protein or a vegetable i would bloat look like i was about to give birth people actually asked me if i was pregnant i would have horrible flatulence and horrible pain and i just ibs symptoms and we just really didn't have any answers and we, we went to gastroenterologists and they kind of just grouped me in that IBS category and kind of told me to figure out like how I can eat. So I kind of did modify my diet and I started to just eat like a lot of a lot of meat and fish and vegetables, but of course your body needs fat to thrive in addition to protein. There's no essential carbs, but there's essential fats and essential um, amino acids. And my body was kind of just becoming very malnourished on one hand because it wasn't getting all the fat it needed. So that led to more problems along the road. And I just kept like very slowly losing weight. So that was that's one side of it. And then everything just kind of just seemed to be stable. And then in fall of 2020, I had another big, I guess, crisis. I went to vote. And after that, everything kind of just fell apart. And it turns out that that was a, a mold damaged building. And I have the susceptibility to mold illness. So that kind of triggered my entire mold trajectory and caused problems on that side. And then I also, at the same time, I was starting to feel really lousy. I woke up with a super distorted face. It was super puffy. I was just very moody, could not sleep. I didn't, I think there was nights that I laid awake half the night and I went to the restroom like literally every 20 minutes. It was awful. And we just didn't know what was going on. So, but I was, I didn't really want to go see another doctor because I was always told, oh, there's nothing, you don't have anything. And that's just very frustrating to always hear. But my parents were, I'm very grateful that they were so pushy. They were like, you have to go see a doctor, like, please, like one more chance. So we made a deal that if I did a CBC and that came out abnormal, that I would go to doctors to check in what was going on. And I guess my CBC came back horrible. <laughs> it looked like I had leukemia <laughs> from the count. It was very scary. Yeah. yeah. So um, I then agreed to go to a functional medicine doctor who then referred me to a hematologist because she was so scared that I had leukemia. But hopefully I did not have leukemia. We had a few bone marrow biopsies that verified that. It did turn out that I have a condition called hypoplastic bone marrow, which basically means like half my bone marrow is kind of shut down and doesn't really produce any blood. So that gradually caused me to become very anemic. And I also have some hereditary blood conditions that cause hemolysis, which is when your red blood cells fall apart. So that combination was bad. And so the bone marrow became so um, hypoplastic because of the malnutrition, but also my functional medicine doctor kind of explained to me that I had a lot of single nucleotide polymorphisms in my DNA and my body wasn't able to detox very well. So throughout any um, detox support like glutathione supplementation or sauna, a lot of heavy metals and other environmental toxins accumulated in my body and my body just wasn't able to let go of those. So when I got the mono infection, that was kind of the last thing that tipped over my rain barrel, I guess, and everything just sported out and I became very symptomatic. and. And I actually had to drop out of college. I went to Rice University for one semester in at the end of 2020 because I was just struggling wow. so much with my I, health. That is, and, and you're 20 years old. And so you're experiencing this still in high school. Is that right? A lot yeah. of this, the beginnings? Yeah. The beginnings were in my junior and senior year. And because I was just feeling so awful, it really also just didn't really have much of a high school life. I was just in survival mode, like trying to get through the day trying to get into college. I, I don't know. I guess the stress of life probably also contributed to not my not being able to get well and just put an extra additional burden on my body that was already fighting. And I also, of course, it turns out I had a lot of parasites. I had prosotoa. I had H. pylori. I had dysbiosis. I literally had the whole shebang. So my functional medicine doctor really helped me get my methylation in order, my 
detoxing in order. I, I take methylated vitamins because my body is not a very good methylator. I think I methylate at like 14 or 16 percent. It's very low. But with the help of the supplements, I'm really able to feel a lot better. And that's another message that I want to share with people. You might get testing back that looks horrendous. Like my genetic testing was just all red, all red, all red. And I was like, oh my gosh. But then I realized that now I have knowledge and I, that gives me the power to do things that can really help me. And now I feel so much better than I did last year. It's no comparison. You're here because you want to get a handle on your health. And if you've been keto for any amount of time, you know that glucose management is the key to burning fat. If there's too much glucose partying out in your body, it makes it that much more challenging to burn fat and generate ketones. Wearing a continuous glucose monitor, aka CGM, is the key to unlocking what's going on in your body minute to minute. You'd be amazed at how many foods you thought would have no effect on your blood sugar actually do. I was blown away at how volatile my glucose was when I first applied a CGM in 2020. I thought my diet was perfect. By seeing your glucose mapped out moment by moment, you get to see how stress, activity, and food choices make a direct impact on your health and how you feel. CGM is the number one tool I use with my clients when they're needing motivation to clean up their diet. There's nothing quite like seeing in real time what the food you just ate is doing to your body. Daily, I make better choices because I'm wearing a CGM. I started using the NutriSense CGM program in February 2022, and I've been really impressed with how easy it is to use this app. You apply the CGM to your arm, I swear it doesn't hurt, and then connect it to the NutriSense app to show you way more than your glucose level. The app displays your peak, how high your glucose spiked after the meal, stability, how much of a jump your glucose took, recovery, whether or not you recovered to your pre-meal glucose number, delta, the difference between your glucose before the meal and after the meal. And all of this data is summed up with a meal by meal and final daily score so you can track your progress day by day. I could go on and on and on and on about this app, but it's probably better if you just go to NutriSense.io slash KDP and use the code KDP to get 30 dollars off any subscription plan to the CGM program. And your purchase comes with one month of free support from a registered dietitian. Step by step, they show you how to track your data, understand your glucose trends, log meals, see the macro breakdown, and so much more. That's NutriSense dot i o slash k d p and use the code k d p for thirty dollars off. Wow, that's incredible. And for those that don't understand just how important methylation is, and I'm sure that your practitioner shared this with you also, I mean, methylation is part of your phase two liver detoxification. So if you're not methylating a lot of the stuff that you're holding on to, like Helen's mentioned, like mold, and you mentioned metals and virus, like mono being a virus, your body's not able to properly process things. And it can actually stop the ability to to detoxify properly through the liver. And so, yeah, in that case, making sure that you're having the proper supplements to support that methylation, I'm sure you noticed a big change from that support, hey? Yeah, I do. I do feel so much better. And then since I also have my glutathione gene snip, that was like a double whammy, I guess. And I've been going into my infrared sauna every morning. And I also get take liposomal glutathione support and also intravenous glutathione. And I've actually been able to get rid of my arsenic toxicity. I had a very high arsenic load. I still have some mercury and some other, I think, lead, but where those are slowly getting detoxed too. It's also very important that you don't detox too quickly because then it's that's too much for your body and you get like a Herx reaction. So my advice to anyone out there is that if you ever feel really uncomfortable during a detox protocol, you're doing it too quickly and you need to give your body like 
time to actually get rid of everything. But I'm sure that you are aware of that, Leanne. And I think you do talk about that in your other podcasts as well. Yeah, I have had a couple Herxes in my time. And when you have your first Herx, you're like, I swear I will do everything in my power to never have a client experience this because it's literally the worst. Have you had one? Yeah, I had one. I started to take Cat's Claw a few weeks ago for to get rid of my viral load because I'm still struggling with that. And I was very good friends with the restroom for a few weeks. Yeah, I bet. Oh, I bet. Another, I don't know if you've tried, have you looked into Japanese knotweed for viral loads? It's a little bit, if you can't handle cat's claw and those sorts of things, it could be helpful. I don't know, maybe something to research. Maybe it's, it might be, I think it's a blend. I think it might be in there, but I do also take monolaurin. Oh, good. Yeah. And monolaurin is really great for busting through biofilms, which I'm sure, have you learned a little bit about biofilms and all that stuff too? Yeah, I do have, I have macrons in my nose, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared to take the spray because I have a porphyria and I react to a lot of medications. And I know that the, what they use to crack the biofilm isn't a medication, but last time I took a medication, I had to get a blood transfusion because my blood fell apart. So Super. I'm just like, <laughs> I know I should be doing the macrons, but you know, scared, but you know, I think what? You're now you're motivating me that I think that's as I'm getting stronger, that's another thing I'm going to have to tackle is the macarons on my nose. Yeah. And I think too, like understanding what your limits are. And for those that don't know what a Herx reaction is, like Helen said, it's just a your body's detoxing too quickly. I mean, people can have Herx reactions from taking too much magnesium even or melatonin because uh, metals can be in the brain. When we're taking melatonin, it pushes the metals out of the brain when we're sleeping. And if you get that really groggy feeling after that could be because you're not taking enough binders and that can cause a Herx reaction. So like you said, like so perfectly, it's just a sign that you're detoxing too quickly. And even with the lead and just hearing your experience with, you know, the arsenic is down. That's something I'm personally working on now. Super fun. Uh, My mom has lead toxicity, like very, 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 very bad. And what I've learned about lead is because it's stored in the bones, it's a longer process because you got to wait for it to come out and then detoxify it and wait for it to come out. So it's cool. You've learned so much over the last three years, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. There's so many things that you just don't think of when you think you're healthy. But now you have to focus on so much, like even like on meat quality. And you would never think that how animals are being treated, for example, or what they're being fed impacts you. But if I eat a chicken that is not pasture raised and receive corn or soy, I actually feel worse the next day compared to if I eat like a regeneratively farmed chicken that only foraged. It's crazy. And I think that a lot of people can prevent uh, health crises if they just make little lifestyle adjustments to avoid the accumulation of all these things. Because as in, like, in my experience, usually you only become symptomatic when it's already too late. <laughs> Yeah. And I think you mentioned this before, but your body has that ability to accumulate things a lot quicker than others. And so there are people that their drainage pathways aren't open and things are really, really tight. And depending on what sorts of genetic mutations they have, it becomes a lot harder for their body. So where Helen might walk into a moldy building for one minute and have a really strong reaction because her body's not able to detox things properly. Somebody else could walk into that moldy building, the mycotoxins go in their body, their body detoxifies it out or detoxes it out. And it goes to their their urine and everything's fine. So there are those types of people that are so different. You did mention in your process, did you say you went to vote and you had gone into the building and that's what triggered the mold piece? Yeah, that's what we think because it was very, it was a water damaged building for sure. But I, when I went to get my SIRS biomarkers tested, uh, they do like a a lab uh, test to see how far you are along your trajectory of mold illness. I was already, I think, either the top or the second to top tier. So it must have been triggered earlier on in my life. And maybe it was just reactivated when I was exposed to the 
water damaged building. I'm not exactly sure, but now I'm following the Shoemaker protocol and I'm already seeing a lot of results in my biomarkers and also maybe CS test, which is the visual contrasting screening test you can take online. I think if you have mold illness, you have trouble with visual contrast. So the test gives you a score and tells you if you might need to look into mold illness testing. So that's very helpful. And I'm taking a lot of binders like cholestyramine, which helps me get rid of mycotoxins that have accumulated in my body. I'm glad you mentioned the eye test. I'll totally include that in the show notes because it's a great way to know whether or not you're dealing with mold. And a lot of the times it doesn't need to be like a lot of the clients that I work with have maybe had like they grew up in a moldy home or they have a little bit of symptoms of mold toxicity, but it really ranges from just a tiny bit of mold issues to probably what you experienced, which was quite epic. I know we have a neighbor whose home was riddled with black mold and her husband actually passed away with complications from all of that. So it can go from just a couple of symptoms, you know, peeing at night multiple times, like you mentioned, maybe not every 15 minutes, all all the way up to some pretty scary stuff, hey? Yes, definitely. Also, like your uh, memory is impacted or your word recollection. And my mom has mold illness too. And there's times where I'm German, so we speak German at home. And it was sometimes when we speak in German, we'd like we didn't couldn't think of the German words, so we had to use the American word or vice versa. And it's just kind of scary when you like don't remember things and you're like thinking, do I have Alzheimer's or it's like. The, your brain just starts to spiral and you become really scared. But it's all coming back now. Our memories are improving and I don't really struggle with word recollection anymore. And it's also really great to see that my mom and my dad are also so involved in getting their health back. And it's just, even though I was hit the hardest, it's still a big family effort. And I, I really couldn't do it without the support of my mom, my dad and my brother. They're my rocks. So thank you. Keto flu, impossible fasting symptoms that stop you mid-fast, cravings at any hour of the day, or feeling off after a sweaty workout, these are some of the signs that you're low in electrolytes. When I first started keto, I made all of the mistakes. One of the biggest ones was not supplementing with electrolytes. And still, seven years into keto, I often forget how essential electrolytes are. Honestly, it's easy to forget to take electrolytes because, well, a lot of them don't taste very good or work very well. Enter Element, the most delicious, well balanced electrolyte powder I've personally tried, like ever. Add to water and enjoy any time of day. These electrolytes are salty as they should be, quenching your thirst and hitting the spot. And the best part, when you head to drinklmnt.com slash KDP, you'll receive a free Element sample pack. You only pay $5 for shipping. The sample pack includes eight packets of Element that includes two citrus, two raspberry, two orange, and two raw unflavored. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash KDP for your free sample pack. I love Element and I really think you're going to too. Again, that's drinkelement.com forward slash KDP to get your free sample pack. And if you don't love it, they will refund your $5. No questions asked. Yeah, completely. And and so many people go so long without answers. It's usually quite uncommon for the symptoms to happen. And three years later, understanding what's happening and to have those answers is just such a blessing. I have many colleagues and friends that I speak to often about mold and reactivated things, all sorts of stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute. But Oftentimes it can be 5, 10, 15 years of not having any answers. So it's really awesome that all of you pushed for answers. And I'm sure I'm sure you're very thankful of that. Yeah, it was, I think, very frustrating, especially for my parents, because they were just seeing their daughter waste away. I mean, to give some context, I'm 5'10", and my lowest weight was 75 pounds. And I was eating and it just wasn't sticking. It was, it was just going through. I um, luckily have been able to gain back a lot of my weight because this is where I want to thank my gastroenterologist. I had an exosome treatment with my functional medicine doctor. For those of you who don't know what exosomes are, they're the little um, growth factors 
that are in the umbilical cords of babies that were just born and they're kind of like stem cells but they don't have any dna so when they go on my body they take on my dna and they go to the places where they need to do healing my a functional medicine doctor kind of calls them like miracle grow and as i mentioned earlier i had severe issues with digesting fat and about a month after i had my first exosome treatment i've had three so far my gastroenterologist kind of told me to do a fecal stool test where they measure how much fat is in your stool. And we were assuming that I have a fat malabsorption problem because of the symptoms that I was showing. And I had to eat 100 grams of fat for a week prior to the test. And that was a really big deal because every time I ate just a tiny bit of fat, I would bloat and have so much pain. So I was getting ready to camp out on the couch with a heating pad. And on my first day of eating fat, I did have a lot of pain, but it wasn't as bad as it used to be. And then every every time I ate fat again, it hurt and I still bloated, but it wasn't as bad as it was the day before. And after the week and I did my test, I just decided to keep continuing to eat a lot of fat in my diet. So I just, I started to kind of adopt your keto for women approach. And Ever since then, I've not I've been having as much issues with fat, and now I'm barely, I barely blow or barely have any pain, and I think it's all due to the exosomes. But then I also want to thank my gastroenterologist for pushing me to do the stool test because I had wouldn't have had discovered that I could eat fat again if I hadn't done the test. So that was another big game changer. My recovery was the inclusion of a lot of more dietary fat. Yes, completely. And by eating a ketogenic diet, when we're dealing with mold toxicity, it is a game changer because those ketones are also working on your benefit and the fats are really helpful. So the fact that you can now digest it is just fantastic. Has it made a difference now, like eating keto just to your symptoms? And I'm sure it's helped with the brain fog also. Yes, and definitely will help me gain weight. I've gained about 15 pounds. So and a lot of muscle too. I had lost a lot of muscle because I was just so weak. I couldn't even go up the stairs in August. It was really, really sad. But now I can run up the stairs. I go to physical therapy a few times a week. I go on lots of walks. And so I'm definitely gaining my strength back. My um, hair is growing back. I had lost almost all of my hair. So I was just so malnourished. And just overall, I just have better energy, more sustained energy. And I'm just really enjoying all the fat. Like I, I, I literally, every morning, I just eat egg yolks with avocado and butter and all just mashed together. I just love the feeling. I think my body is just really enjoying it and nourishing itself again. And I kind of at the same time started my blog, which is curated. I have an Instagram page and also a website where I just started to post the recipes that we're creating at my house because this whole journey has kind of taught me how much I love to cook. And it's just my little creative space. And I just want to make it more accessible to other people as well, because there's a lot of bad things out there and seemingly healthy products. And someone like me really needs to pay attention to what they're putting in their body. And I really learned that I can't trust restaurants or even health food products because I usually eat them and I feel really bad afterwards. So just making cooking more accessible and easy and also tasty, I think is very important for all families. Completely so true. And I'm going to include your the link to your Instagram page, the link to your blog in the show notes so people can check that out. So good. I just love that. And you said that your family was from Germany. Whereabouts? Oh, we're from Cologne. So when I was almost six, my brother, my mom and my dad, we moved to the US and everyone else is still in Germany. And I actually haven't seen them for two and a half years for because of COVID and I can't travel because of my blood right now, it's my hemoglobin is too low. So I really miss them. Family's everything, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's so true. My husband's from Germany also, and we've really missed going over there and visiting with everyone. For sure. I can relate to that. Where is he from? Just outside of Nuremberg. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wonderful. And the food. I mean, the food is just, isn't it? Like, yeah, I know it's so good. delicious. I have some um, a keto fried German recipes on my blog. You should check those out. I will definitely. Oh, my goodness. I make schnitzel more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> oh, my God. I have a keto schnitzel recipe. I have a goulash recipe and then a roulade recipe. There's more coming. Don't worry. We're working on a German grill extravaganza post. 
Oh, I like it. Yeah, they really know how to eat. I really thoroughly enjoy German cuisine. I love it. I love it too. <laughs> I know I always we call my grandma every morning because I, I miss her and a lot. <laughs> and we always talk about her about the food and what we're cooking. <laughs> and it's like food is just a great way to bond with your loved ones. And I think it's so important to have like family dinners. It just makes it all so much more yummy and I feel like I feel like I get more from the nourishment when I eat with people that I love. Yeah. And the fact that you can sit there and have the energy and know that the foods you're choosing are healing your body slowly, but surely. What do you feel? You know, everything kind of came to the forefront. It sounds like August 2021 of just probably the roughest time since then. Where do you kind of see yourself? You know, viruses, mold, heavy metals, environmental toxins, the genetic predispositions. Have you chatted with your practitioner about kind of what's next or what phases you're in and and what are you looking forward to? So I actually have an appointment today and tomorrow we just went through my, or last, a few weeks ago, we went through my heavy metal test where we got good news that my arsenic is almost gone. And now we're just working on the mercury and the lead with, um, I think alpha, I don't know, I always say it wrong, lipoic acid IV. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. So that, and then I just started the cat's claw, which caused me the herx, but that's gone now. So I'm going to just keep doing that. And the model Lauren. So that's on the detox front. I have some, we did a great plain oat test or not oat. I don't know if oat was that company. I did an oat test and also another environmental toxin test, which I'm going to review soon. So then I'll get more of a plan there. But we're just slowly um, continuing to just to strengthen me with the detoxing. The, I will always be getting taking the methylated vitamins for the rest of my life because I just need that support as well as the glutathione. And then just I'm out in nature a lot. I just focus on eating very well. I might do another round of exosomes because those were a huge game changer. After my last administration of exosomes, I got them, I would say around New Year's, I've already seen improvements. I'm, my balance has gotten a lot better. And I just, I feel like I put on some more a muscle as well. And it's just great. It's going to be a long journey, but I'm confident that at the end of the day, I'm going to be strong, recovered. I won't be able to maybe live as carefree as other people, but that doesn't mean that I'm not happy. Because I think right now, even though I've went through this entire struggle, I mean, I almost died. Not one moment through that entire journey was I ever really sad or depressed. I mean, I was frustrated, but I think now I'm happier than I ever was in my life. And I've just learned to love the little things in life. And I think that often gets forgotten in our hectic world today. Yeah, completely. And what I'm really hearing from you is like picking away at it and having patience and knowing that you can't just snap your fingers and everything's going to go to where it needs to go. I hear a lot of support from your family, which I'm sure has been just so key to your persistency in all of that, to have people around you that are encouraging you in the work that's needing to be done and a lot of patience, right? Yes, I would definitely say I got sick over years. I mean, the first, I think I got 16 years of my life, I was accumulating all these things. You can't expect it to go away overnight. And that's very hard, especially in today's society, because we just want the quick fix, but there isn't a quick fix. And at the end of the day, only you can change your health with the knowledge that you get from other people. But you have to do it. You have to be patient. And I promise you, it pays off. Just keep fighting. I really hope you're enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. You can snap a pic and tag me at Leanne Vogel or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. Yeah, that's beautiful, Helen. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your story. It's just a wonderful encouragement. I know we've been chatting on Instagram for some time and to be able to just chat with you about your experience has been a great encouragement to me also. Thank you so much. And I've, I've actually been following you for so many years now. And then when I was able to eat fat again, I was like, yes, I get to make all of Leanne's recipes. <laughs> so I couldn't eat them before. And my mom was always the guinea pig. I was, I would make them for or then I couldn't eat them or I would eat them and get pain but now I can eat them pain free so that really made my that made my day so I'm really happy to and looking forward to your upcoming podcasts and your your future work I'm I really you're a great inspiration and role model for me 
Oh, Helen, thank you so much. That's so sweet. And I'm so glad you get to enjoy fat. And yeah, all of us, I'm sure that have listened to this podcast are just, you know, we'll be praying for you and your recovery and continue to just heal, heal, heal. And who knows where this is going to end up for you as you learn more. I mean, you probably know more than most practitioners at this point about health. So I'm excited to see how this will inspire you moving forward as you build your life and and continue to learn about your body and your health. Yes, definitely. Your body is such a fascinating thing. I didn't even didn't even know about all the like the biochemistry, how everything is so interconnected. It, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well again, thanks for coming on and we will include in the show notes the links to your Instagram and your website, Cure Eated. And um so if those listening to today's episode want to check out Helen and uh, connect with her on Instagram, the show notes are the place to do that. And we'll see you back here next Tuesday for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Miss Leanne. And I also encourage anyone, if you have any questions, to reach out to me via DM. I'm happy to share any help and experiences that I have because I think community is everything and we can always learn from each other. It really is so, so true. Well, I hope you enjoyed episode 370 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Again, you can connect with Helen by going to her Instagram, cure.eated or her website, cureeated.com. If you have questions or comments about today's episode, head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. You can catch up on previous podcast episodes and notes from today's show by going to ketodietpodcast.com. Just look for episode 370. And then those other episodes you might really enjoy episode 354 and 347 about mold and I really like episode 354 because it's another experience of mold so really good stuff thanks so much for hanging out with us and I will see you next Tuesday for another episode of the keto diet podcast see you then bye Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. Music for the Keto Diet Podcast provided by Yechi. Follow Jacob on Instagram at Yechi underscore official and on Spotify as Yechi. That's Y-E-C-H-I. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. So